What's going on my internet peeps? All right, today I wanted to share a project I've been working on for a friend of mine. This is an end plate for a spoiler on a Honda S2000. These plates may look pretty simple, but they actually have quite a bit of engineering in them. Now I am by no means a computational fluid dynamicologist, but the basic principle behind these end plates is to help direct airflow over the spoiler to increase downforce. And those little notches that are cut out of the back allow vortices to form at the end of the wing. This helps with efficiency. If you want to read more about the engineering, go check out the website linked below. Now for my end of the job, it's not a complicated project, but seeing as I don't have a mill large enough or a CNC plasma table, uh, I'm going to have to get a little creative with how I cut these things out. The final product will be made of aluminum, which I can't cut on my laser cutter, but I can cut a template that will be used later. So we're going to start there. I'm cutting one template the exact size of the final end plate, and one template that's a little smaller. I'll get into why in a second. The first thing to do is drill some locating holes so both of these templates can be mounted in the same place for this two-step process. In the first operation, I'll be using a plasma cutter to cut a rough profile of a part. This is why I cut a slightly smaller version of the template. This offset plus the offset of the plasma cutter guide will give me a part about 3 millimeters larger than the final product. We'll trim this last 3 millimeters off later, but you might be wondering why I don't just use the plasma cutter to cut this to final dimensions. And the short answer is, I suck at plasma cutting. The longer answer is that plasma cutting aluminum by hand is usually a messy job. You know, a pro might be able to get away with this, but this is literally the first time I've used this plasma cutter, so I'm just hoping I don't screw the whole thing up. Once we have the rough shape of the profile, I clean up the edges a little with a sander and mount our second template. I'm using some double-sided tape for this because we need the workpiece to lay flat on the router table. Yes, I said router table. I'll be using a run-of-the-mill woodcutting flush cut bit for this next operation. Now, doing some research on this, I found anything from any bit that works with wood work with aluminum to if you ever even think about using a wood bit on aluminum, you and your future children will be killed. And as I like my shop advice a little less, let's say, paradoxical, I figured I'd give it a try, with an abundance of caution and safety gear, of course. But as you can probably tell from this video, it worked great. I had a bit of a problem with the bit coming loose on the router, the included wrenches were pretty terrible, and the taper on the collet made getting the cutting bit tight almost impossible. I eventually fixed this problem later with the mill and the lathe, and after that it was pretty smooth sailing. The final step is to give the edge a nice chamfer with this 45 degree chamfer bit. This bit came protected with this odd looking goop. Weird, but effective. It took a bit of adjusting to get right, but once it was set up, the operation was pretty straightforward. Now while you guys watch the final shots of this process, I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters. I know I haven't had a chance to do that lately, but I really appreciate the support. Alright, here's the final product. 
I think they turned out pretty nice. And if you happen to have an S2000 with a giant wing, go check out the Barrow website linked below and pick up a set.